what is going on my crypto fam it is rj here coming in with another crypto video in today's video we're going to dive a little bit deeper into the immortal monks which will be icoing very very soon here now i haven't talked about immortal monks in a while but they are getting ready to launch their monastery which is going to be their DAO. now before we get started if you guys haven't already please consider smashing that like button down below for the youtube algorithm also, if you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you guys are notified every single time I upload new videos and new DeFi projects. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right on in to the flight deck. All right, everyone, so let's dive right on into the Immortal Monks Discord. So if we scroll here, these guys have been around, if we scroll all the way up, since December 4th when they launched this Discord. And then on December 12th, they went ahead and released their Immortal Monk NFTs and we were allowed to mint, which was super cool. So since December, the Immortal Monks have been around. They didn't go anywhere. They've been building their monastery. They've been building their DAO system and how it's going to work all the way up to now. So we have a whole bunch of announcements here. And obviously, I'm going to read the announcement here and then we're going to go into the medium article which is super super meaty so i don't want this video being like an hour long so let's dive into it so on january 28th of this year they said happy friday monks announcement day psa regarding the market as we know we've seen some relatively scary things take place with ohm and time with that said i want to be very clear that we are vigilantly watching the top performers in addition to those going through serious hardships in the dow protocol space i must say we are grateful to have taken our time in launching and doing it properly to learn from other projects mistakes in addition to not being a part of this massive market dip everything happens for a reason and we are still here building properly let's dive into this weekly update so that was january 28th and if you scroll into the latest announcement they'll say greetings immortal monks this was released on february 4th let's dive into the weekly update so they're talking about setup of community forums staking plus contract testing doc sites releasing soon gitbook doc sites is good it is what i normally go straight to docs and white paper when i want to really invest and look into a new project now massive marketing update here they did say they did announce uh, my partnership with the Immortal Monks. New YouTuber, 18,000 subs. I actually have 19,000 now. We're getting close to 20,000. Locked in to promote the Monastery DAO. RJ.eth. We are very excited and pleased to have RJ working closer with us. RJ was also an early supporter of Monks. Active holder and his channel has seen super impressive growth. Show him some love. So when I first was talking to Immortal Monks, I was maybe around, poof, maybe 10,000, I think, on December. And so now we're getting close to the 20,000 mark. And then and then to shine the spotlight away from me, the other one, Locking in Hidden Gem Network, we know Dan Da Silva is a huge part of the community and our growth. And we wanted to work with him very closely due to his massive growth. We are currently working on a longer term deal size proposition. So they're working with the Hidden Gem Network. Super, super awesome channel. If you guys haven't checked out the Hidden Gem Network, it was actually because of Dan, aka the Hidden Gem Network, that I found the Immortal Monks. So he deserves a lot, a lot of support, and he does a lot of good work trying to show you guys new DeFi projects that he's invested in and has come out as well. So he does a lot of the research for you. With that being said, let's dive into the Medium article, which is very, very meaty. So he says, without revealing too much, please read it for yourself. Here is the Medium article. So let's take a look at the Medium article here. So this is their website. Obviously, they are KYC rug docs, so that's always good and gives us a little bit of confidence. But let's dive into this Medium article. We're going to try and go through it as quickly as we can. It is a six-minute read, but it's going to be a little slower since we're going to break it down. The Monastery DAO Governance, a new way to govern. Greetings, monks. It's been very productive here on the background as we move the project forward. Here are some quick updates. We are releasing the date for ICO launch soon. Just finalizing a few things. We've been watching the entire landscape and seeing what has happened with other DAOs and have adjusted accordingly. This plan with governance has been one of the strategies we've developed. So Immortal Monks has obviously been keeping an eye on all these other DAOs that have seemed to have gone down from its all-time highs, such as Olympus, such as Time Wonderland, Hector DAO. Now, obviously, we see that Immortal Monks has been obviously looking at this. So how are they going to differentiate themselves from these other DAOs? 
We are working diligently to ensure that we have a massively successful launch and sustainable DAO over the long term. That is the key word there is sustainability. We have a variety of plans we are going to be sharing here, such as investment plans, DAO advancements, etc. However, any plans is contingent on community voting, thus why we are releasing this article first. And here is their introduction to Governance 2.0. Strap in, this is going to be meaty. We've seen that traditional governance via purchase protocol governance tokens on the open market can lead to massive manipulation for the voting system. We were thinking long and hard on how to eliminate these problems to ensure whales don't take over from the start. So that is a problem right now with governance. If you guys don't know, you can use your tokens to have voting rights, to vote for platform decisions. And what's happening right now is whales are coming in with a crap ton of money, buying a bunch of governance tokens, and then voting for the project, and then pretty much selling the governance tokens. So they're seeing how they can solve that. We've come up with a very solid solution after watching other DAOs and their participants' feedbacks, and we are calling this Governance 2.0. A step from previous governance strategies, but with a twist. Liquid staking, but not liquid. If you're familiar with liquid staking protocols such as Lido or Lido, then you can skip to the next session. If you grasp the concept of liquid staking, that is great, but here is something we need to make clear before you skip to the next section. You need to understand that these governance liquid tokens are simply just acting as receipt tokens that are not liquid. They are going to act as receipt as proof that you are participating in the staking pool. So what is liquid staking? To understand what we are doing, you need to understand liquid staking first. Typically staking protocols, you would need to stake your tokens and then there would be a lock period where you can where you cannot access those tokens. The lock period of different projects can be whatever they decide. This lock period is rather self-explanatory as it locks your tokens as a holder, causing them to be illiquid. So here's a, a drawing of pretty much what happens in a governance. So you have your governance token, you stake it in the monastery dial, it mints you a synthetic governance token. So it's just proof that you have that you are staked and part of the system. Now, after some lockup time, you can unstake your governance token back and give and it comes back to you. Now, with these synthetic governance tokens, what ends up happening with them is if the project has a proposal like, hey, should we invest in this project? What you can do with the synthetic governance token is you can because you have proof of ownership of the platform, you can then vote with it. That is how these DAOs work. So of course, that's what they talk about here with ETH 2.0. After you lock it up for X amount of time, you can't touch the ETH. Even if it goes from 2000 to 5000, if you have five months left, you can't liquidate it. You are locked up in that staking protocol. So platforms like Lido or Lido, Yearn and many others have appeared where you can participate in these staking pools and earn your APR from participating. However, they provide you a minted token that is paired one to one with your investments and that token becomes liquid. So let's say you participate in ETH pool where you get 5% APR. If you participated in the ETH regular staking pools and you're locked up for X amount of time, simple enough. With Lido, you are receiving a token they meant for you that is exactly how much you've staked. So if you've staked 1.5 ETH in Lido, you get 1.5 staked ETH. Lido's token they meant for you is pegged to the Ethereum main price. If you want to liquidate your uh, staked ETH, by all means you can. You can easily transfer it to an exchange like Gate.io and sell it for USDT. So summary of liquid staking. Liquid staking is where you stake your initial token and receive back a token that is liquid, which means you can sell it. However, it also acts as a receipt or proof that you are participating in that pool. It's simply another token. So what does that mean for Immortal Mox? Well, the Monastery Governance Receipt token is not going to be liquid. However, the token that is pegged to the main governance token is going to be liquid. So your receipt token, not liquid, but the native governance token will be liquid. So introducing our weighted governance 2.0 objective and how they're going to really drive this governance 2.0. Governance token holders will be able to vote only if they have this receipt token. So let's use 100 governance tokens as an example. Let's say that the max supply is 1,000, just for example purposes. That means that having 100 governance tokens will theoretically give you a 10% vote. That's how it traditionally works. Rather than granting one-to-one -one voting power, participants are going to have to lock their governance token for X period of time. And in return, they receive a token that can be used for voting purposes, 
but will be weighted. So how does that work exactly? Let's go back to the 100 token example. We are going to create a staking portal for governance tokens that have multiple different options for locking your governance tokens. For X period of time in return, we mint you the receipt token that will allow you to vote on proposals. For example, if you have 100 tokens, you can pick from multiple options. The locking period is yet to be determined. But for example purposes, it'll look like a week, two weeks, one year, two years. So you'll have different options. However, each lock has a percentage reflection on your base staking tokens. So weighted voting is here. The lower time frame you pick to lock your tokens, the less of a vote you have when voting your token is minted. Let's say one week lockup is 10% voting rights. That means that 100 tokens, your vote will only count as 10 tokens. Let's say two years is 75% voting rights. Your 100 tokens will have the same voting rights as 75 tokens, not the full 100. This is going to deter voting manipulation extremely well. Whale manipulation stops here. And this is a really awesome feature that I like to see with other projects is how to really control whales. Now, if we take a look at two projects I'm invested in, I'm invested in Drip and I'm also invested in StrongBlock. Those are just two of them. Now, when you take a look at Strong, I absolutely love Strong. They're continuing to print me tokens every single time and they're an engineering company. But time and time again, we've asked them how they can control whales because as you get to the very top, it is so, so, the, the compounding effect is crazy. The amount of uh, nodes you can build when you're at the top is just so, so exponential. And they've answered time and time again that there's nothing they can do in terms of whales because they just open up a new wallet. Now, if we look at something like Drip, Drip has a whale tax. So quite simply put, if you own X amount of drip from the total circulating supply, you get taxed insane amounts, which incentivize people to give back. So what ends up happening is if you hold 10% of the total circulating supply, you're getting taxed 50%. So that's a way that they control whales. So when I see whale manipulation stops here, that is automatically a good sign for me. Not only does this make the protocol much safer and trustworthy, this also shows how the monastery's community health is doing. If we have more participants staking their tokens for long periods of time, it shows the community is in it for the long haul. This also means that the tokens become in such high demand since they will be locked up for driving the price of governance tokens very fast to the upside. Less governance tokens on the open market with high demand equals higher price. The most important part is that it stops whale manipulation. If you paid attention to DAOs that recently failed, whales were quickly acquiring governance tokens at a rapid pace to make the needed changes fast. If whales did this with the monastery governance tokens, in order to have a meaningful effect in their tokens, they would need to buy in significant amounts and they would need to lock their tokens for a long period of time. So essentially, the small investor has the same say in voting as a whale if the small investor is playing the long-term game. This is a three-way win. Can it be manipulated still? Down the road, it is possible. But remember the tokenomics. At the very start, it is not easy because there isn't a heavy circulating supply at the open market. With this feature, we are implementing from the start, the supply shock for governance tokens is going to be immense. So final words, as we believe this is extremely smart to implement, we are the first to really push forward with this system. We hope the community receives it positively as we're always striving for innovation, stability, and long-term growth. The fact we've been watching the entire landscape has been a true blessing. We aren't rushing because we want to implement fail safes like this one, where we believe the backbone of the community should be the priority. We want your opinions as well. Feel free to leave feedback where you see fit. And then they tell you becoming a monk is simple with some links here. So with that being said, I obviously was a early holder of the Monk NFTs. I currently have three Monk NFTs and I obviously have believed in them since the very beginning. And they've obviously still stuck around, been around, continuing to build and improve on their DAO that they're about to release, which they are really heavily focused on governance 2.0. Now that I like that. I like the innovation. I like the progress that's being made and I like that they're taking a look at the landscape when it comes to DAOs. So this is obviously a project that I am bullish on and I have obviously been a supporter since the very beginning. I know a bunch of you when I released this in December, the first like teaser of the Immortal Monks, some of you jumped on and purchased some Monk NFTs, which was really cool. And now here they are getting finalizing their information, finalizing whatever they need to do on their end to release their DAO, which is going to be the monastery. And I'm very, very excited 
to really partner with them and work with them. They have been very easy to talk to, which is difficult to say about other projects, but with Immortal Monks, they're very easy to talk with. Their community seems really, really positive. If you take a look at their Discord, there's a lot of community members in there. And this is just a project that I'm really, really excited about. So definitely stay tuned as they start to make more announcements on their ICO. Now, if you guys did enjoy that video, do me a favor and smashy, smashy that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Also, if you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you guys are notified every single time I upload new content about DeFi. We are getting close to the 20,000 subscriber mark, which is gonna be an insane milestone for me. So if you guys haven't already, please consider subscribing. Also, if you guys want a free $50 in Bitcoin, I will leave a link down in the description below to open a Celsius account where you guys just need to transfer $400 worth of assets and you guys get your free $50 in Bitcoin. Now, whatever you want to do with that Bitcoin is completely up to you. But again, it's just absolutely free money waiting to be claimed. With that being said, life is too freaking short. So eat some delicious food, drink some delicious drinks, do some good in the world, spread some positive vibes, and I'm going to see everyone on the next crypto video next time.